This is Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI. Unless you are living under a rock, you must have heard of ChatGPT, the new revolutionary AI chatbot released by OpenAI in November 2022. Well, Sam Altman is the man spearheading this innovation and is now regarded as the face of artificial intelligence. He is one of the most important people who are impacting the future of the world. Sam is also an investor in over 400 companies. And the strange fact is, none of his investments is in OpenAI. In fact, he has no ownership stake in OpenAI, which makes it a rare startup of its kind, one in which the boss does not have a vested interest in its growth. Though Sam has his reasons for doing this, which you will find out later in this video, you can see how this would discourage potential investors on investing in the company. But before OpenAI was even a thing, Sam was already an established name in the tech industry. Paul Graham even went so far to refer to him as the best CEO in the Bay Area when he was just 19, comparing him to the likes of the late Steve Jobs, Sergey Brin, and Larry Page. But how did he get so powerful? How did he become so successful? In this video, we will look at how Sam Altman left from being a college dropout to becoming the CEO of one of the fastest growing companies in the world. Sam Altman was born in 1985. He is the youngest of three siblings. He grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, where he attended the prestigious John Burroughs School. He was part of the school's debate club, which helped refine his communication skills. This will become an essential skill in his role as CEO. While in school, he built websites for local businesses and nonprofits as a side hustle. Due to his incredible work ethic and intelligence, Sam was able to get admission into Stanford, one of the best colleges for ambitious kids like him. While in Stanford, he got to meet other future billionaires like Evan Spiegel, the founder of Snapchat, and Kevin Systrom, the founder of Instagram. After two years at Stanford, Sam dropped out at just the age of 19. You see, Sam was convinced he was wasting his time at Stanford. The reason was he and two of his friends were working on a social app, Looped, that connects people together based on their location. He had to also convince his friends to drop out so they can create a company based on this app. It was not long after that Looped caught the eye of Paul Graham, who was the creator of Y Combinator. Graham immediately saw the potential of Sam after meeting him. As such, Looped was the first ever company to be funded by Y Combinator, alongside Reddit. They were given an initial investment of $6,000 each. Looped eventually grew and reached a peak valuation of $175 million. But it struggled to grow further than that. So in 2012, he sold the company for $43 million. At the time, this was one of the biggest acquisitions of a social networking app. With his newly acquired wealth, he started living the millionaire lifestyle in California, from racing supercars, traveling the world, and even flying airplanes over the city. He was already set for life and could just retire and continue enjoying his life. But from what we've learned about Sam, obviously, his story will not end this way. He was hungry for more. Sam initially returned to Silicon Valley as a venture capitalist. But this life will be so boring for him, as it does not give the same adrenaline as building your own company. Quick pause, guys. If you have made it this far into the video, can you do us a favor and click on the like and subscribe button? It might not seem as much, but it goes a long way in growing our community. Okay, going back to our story. Due to Sam's desire to get back into building startups, Paul Graham made him an offer that he could not turn down, a role as partner in Y Combinator. Not only will he get mentored directly from Paul Graham, but he will also get to work on what he loves best, building new startups. This is when his true genius began to shine. He was so good at identifying potential winning startups that just after three years of working in Y Combinator, he was made the president. Under Sam's leadership, YC prospered. His strategy was targeting startups that work on world-changing ideas. YC massively increased the startups they invested in. This was because he had a different strategy from other venture capitalists. Generally, other investors talked only to people who had connections in the startup world. YC, on the other hand, talked to anyone who had a business idea. This strategy made YC's portfolio valuation to grow over $100 billion under Sam Altman's leadership. 
Sam had three key principles he used when investing in startups. Firstly, he always focused on the founders. Secondly, he ensured they solved real problems. And thirdly, he always thought long-term. Despite having an incredible career at Y Combinator, Sam was still looking for the next big thing. He knew his potential was greater than just being a startup investor. He was still hungry for more. In February of 2014, he found what he was looking for. He spotted the next big wave, artificial intelligence. At that time, a lot of people were pessimistic about AI, but he knew it had potential in solving a lot of real world problems. This is when he decided to partner with Elon Musk to start a new AI company. What we know as OpenAI today. Their mission was to ensure that AI benefits all of humanity, reason why they made the company a nonprofit. But there was one issue. About three quarters of all the AI talent available were working at Google or DeepMind, which caused a shortage in the talent pool. The strategy they used to hire was to make very large compensation offers to researchers, which they could not say no to. I mean, they were offering million dollar compensation packages. Even up to now, according to Levels.FYI, a senior engineer in OpenAI gets a compensation package of over 900K which is more than even the big tech companies. It is no surprise that they were able to poach nine out of 10 of the AI talent they targeted when starting the company. But this was not their major issue though, as the main issue was actually capital. It was really hard to attract capital as nonprofit organization. Normally, this would have been solved by its billionaire founder, Elon Musk, as he had pledged to put in a total of $1 billion into the company. Elon made an initial payment of $100 million, but then Elon and Sam had a disagreement on the company's future, leading to Elon eventually leaving the company. The reason he left was due to the conflict of interest, since Tesla was also investing in AI for their self-driving cars, which would mean they will be competing for talent. I mean, this might not be the real reason, but at least that's what he said. Elon promised he will still complete the payment of his $1 billion pledge to OpenAI, but he did not make any further payments after leaving the company. This left Sam Altman in a lot of issues. Not only were they finding it difficult attracting talent or investors, but they were also running out of money. The thing about AI is not just the talent cost, but the cost of training models on GPUs is also extremely high. Training models literally cost hundreds of millions of dollars. This left Sam Altman with only one option at this time, to go have a meeting with Satya Nadella. The result of that meeting was a partnership with Microsoft, which will mean a change in the nonprofit status. This was highly criticized by the public. To be fair, OpenAI has capped the profit an investor can make. But this cap is 100 times their initial investment, which means this idea of a cap is just a PR stunt due to the backlash they got after becoming for profit. But then again, to be fair to Sam Altman in particular, his hands were tied. No one will invest the amount of money needed to run OpenAI to a nonprofit. To prove Sam Altman was not profit driven, he has no equity in OpenAI. The reason he stated for doing this is that it ensures he continues to run the company in a way that remains aligned to its original mission. With the support of Microsoft, OpenAI was finally able to make strides. In 2018, GPT-1 was released. It was quite cool, but there was nothing mind-blowing about it. One year after, Sam Altman stepped down from his position of president of Y Combinator to fully focus on OpenAI. This was a difficult decision as he was leaving the company that believed in him over and over, from funding his first startup to making him the president. This decision ended up paying off. Shortly after leaving Y Combinator, GPT-2 was released. This was a significant upgrade from GPT-1. It impressed everyone in the field of AI. Then they took it to an even higher level with GPT-3, which was way better than GPT-2. It could summarize text, generate text, and even translate text to different languages. Then to prove to the world that AI was not just good at only text, OpenAI released Doll e in 2021. It could generate images in all kinds of styles, including cartoons, photos, and even abstract art. 
However, it was in 2022 that OpenAI really set its foot forward as a leader in artificial intelligence. Sam came up with the idea of putting GPT-3 in a chatbot. A lot of engineers did not see the point of doing that. But Sam, being the visionary he was, was convinced this was going to work. And saying it worked is an understatement. When ChatGPT was released, it became the fastest growing app in history, reaching over 100 million users in less than two months. This tremendous success of ChatGPT cemented Sam's name in the history of AI. OpenAI has not stopped there. In 2023, it released GPT-4, which now at this point has become scary. It can do a lot of tasks done by humans much faster and more efficiently. This has led to a lot of people asking the question of AI getting to the point of completely replacing human jobs. Check out the video to the left, where we explain why AI will never completely replace human jobs. Hope you enjoyed this inspiring story. Tell us in the comment section if you think Sam Altman is the most influential person in the AI revolution. Until next time.